Hi, this is Amrita Sukumar and I am bringing to you this podcast called Unsettling. Look around you. Everyone is trying to create their own story. Make a tiny change in someone's life by just following their passion and in turn inspiring the others to follow suit. This podcast brings to you stories of people who have defied the definition of settled set by the society and have created their own. They have found happiness in their version of settled. What is yours? Alcohol. Now that I have your attention, let me introduce my next guest and unsettler. He is a mixologist, bartender, and an entrepreneur. He is the proud owner of his bar Sidecar in Delhi, which has won a spot in Asia's 50 Best Bar Awards. And he also owns a mobile bartending service company called Cocktails and Dreams. He has been featured by Drinks International magazine in the Bar World 100 list of most influential people in the global beverage industry to 2020. This is an interesting description, right? But this is something that I got off the internet. To know more about him in detail, I would like to welcome our next guest, Mr. Yangdup Lama. Hello, sir. How are you? And I hope I pronounced your name right. Hello, Amrita. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to your wonderful podcast. And yes, I think you've got my name absolutely correct. <laughs> I am so glad. <laughs> so, uh, may I ask, what does your name mean? I'm sure you've got this a lot, but just just out of curiosity. Oh, so, uh, it is it is a Buddhist name, and uh, mm-hmm. interestingly, I was born on the first of January, and uh, oh. you know, I was born in my ancestral house. You know, uh, not born in a hospital because the natural birth, and I was born in the okay. in my ancestral house, and I think uh, you know, it, it, at that time, doctors used to visit people's homes, so this was. Right. in my village back home in Darjeeling and uh, uh my grandmother always used to narrate this story and say that uh, you know I was born even before the doctor arrived and it because it was on the 1st of January so and I was absolutely fine and normal so the doctor mm-hmm. came checked on everything and said everything is absolutely fine with the child and said mm-hmm. such a lucky child to be born on the 1st of January and he flipped the 1 rupee note into my hand and that's when my okay. grandmother gave me the name yang to because in buddhism okay. there is a special ceremony uh-huh. that he offer uh, which is called the yang to okay. puja or the yang to ritual right? mm-hmm. yang being luck and uh, oh. prosperity so that is what okay that is what my name means yang to wow <laughs> that's that's such a nice story i'm so glad i asked this question <laughs> so you definitely have prospered and now you are where you are and uh, since i've done a lot of research sir there's this one thing that i realized uh, that sar is sidecar the name that you put for your bar is not the one that jay and yeah, biru had yeah. in the movie but rather it's the name of a cocktail so is it your favorite cocktail yes. if i may ask uh, it is one of my favorite okay. because it's a simple drink it's also a very old classic mm-hmm. and uh, in the olden time mm-hmm. cocktails used to have just three ingredients the spirit mm-hmm. uh the sweet and the sour and this is exactly what what the drink has oh. right and if made properly and if the ratio is correct mm-hmm. uh you know it, it is a great cocktail okay. and not many bartenders especially of the present age mm-hmm. uh understand the simplicity and the nuances of this drink yeah. so it is definitely one of my favorite cocktails and yeah. i like the fact that it is served in a nice looking stem cocktail glass So you know, for me, that is all about elegance. Okay, that's interesting because um, I mean, I actually thought sidecar meant you know something related to Bollywood, and then I figured out that it is a cocktail, and then it makes sense because well, it's a cocktail bar, <laughs> so it has to be named after a cocktail. <laughs> yeah, this is a cocktail bar. <laughs> so, uh, sir, how has your journey been so far? You know, when did you decide to dive into mixology and bartending full time? So as far as I'm concerned, you know, my my life into bartending is purely mm-hmm. through sheer accident, accidental bartender is okay. how I would like to describe myself. And the reason why I say this is, you know, I've been in the trade 25 years now. In 1995, when I actually finished my hotel management mm-hmm. and got into working in hotels, 
accidentally I was selling to the to the bar. So my intention was not to become a bartender. My intention was to work in food and beverage mm. in the hotel and pursue a career in uh, food and beverage. But incidentally, I was sent to the sent straight to the bar, and uh, I started off from the back area of the bar, you know, being more of a bar helper, not really going behind the bar and start mm-hmm. fixing to uh, start to fix drinks. But uh, that is how it all started, and uh, you know, I think about six months after I actually started working in the bar from behind, is when I got an opportunity to go inside the bar and. Fix a few drinks, okay. not cocktails, but street drinks, and I was a very happy man that day. And I realized that you know I was turning out to be a, a much more happier hotelier every time I fixed a drink. And that is how the interest and my journey actually started off. And since 25 years, it's always been a, a happy journey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an interesting story. I thought there's something, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's some kind of training that is given for this craft, right? Um, and i've heard your ted talk so i know that you don't flip bottles <laughs> but as far as i know then ah, so i'm a very classic style bartender <laughs> <laughs> yes so i i made sure that i don't ask this question that do you flip bottles but uh, don't is there some kind of training that is given for this craft yeah so presently yes uh, trainings mm-hmm. are given because it is it requires a lot of knowledge it also requires a lot of technical skills right and this is also like like food right yes. it is very closely linked to human evolution human food and culture and mm-hmm. heritage because of which you know the journey is a never ending journey mm-hmm. so there has to be some kind of a training in the sense that like you have to impart the right knowledge a right know how so that's very important and then there is also a lot of technical know how and uh, when i say technical what happens with, with technology now is that it is it has evolved over a period of time and it keeps evolving so there are new age of techniques to make cocktails as compared to what we used to do 20 years ago or 25 mm-hmm. years ago so it keeps changing and that is the reason why there has to be somebody who is always guiding the younger or an amateur mm-hmm. bartender but beyond a certain point it is also uh, upon the person who takes yeah. it up as mm-hmm. a career to uh, to shape it up according to his interest according to his passion and of course hard work so all of these things combined together could make you a complete person okay. so even after you get a lot of training it is very important that you get the kind of experience that is necessary uh, to make sure that you become a complete persona absolutely training is very important but at the same time exposure is the key you know the like i mm-hmm. said earlier you know, it's a never ending right. journey and the more you experience it whether it's behind the bar or whether it's through your travel or whether it's through meeting mm-hmm. people or whether it, it is through references uh, or through through books or the mm-hmm. internet or your connectivity you know i think in every sense it kind of kind of helps you to evolve and like i said it's a never ending mm-hmm. journey so therefore it it has to be a combination of both it has to be a combination of the right, right training the right mm-hmm. foundation and of course uh, one's passion and interest okay. Okay sir I will uh, make sure that people hear this and understand what re- what is required to become a bartender and a mixologist so um so when you're creating new recipes is there a specific formula you know I always imagine that there's a chemistry lab going on in the back end where you have test tubes and then you're mixing proper cocktails to see that this is the proportion that should be right so does that happen um, in your bar or you know when somebody's preparing a cocktail or trying new recipes now coming to coming to creating new yes. recipes there are a couple of things first and the foremost thing is knowledge comes into play which is yes. very important so we need to have the right knowledge of about the spirit that we using in a particular cocktail mm-hmm. uh, what does the spirit entail not all spirits of the same category are the are the same in terms of its profile or characteristics mm-hmm. so it depends from spirit to spirit and that know how is very very important mm-hmm. second is to be able to bring in the right uh, flavor to combine well with that particular style of spirit so it it is a, it is a lot of things that comes into play you know definitely knowledge your skill your creativity and of course your imagination you know like you need to you need to imagine what you're going to put in the glass and how the finished product is going to look like uh and what we do is of course you know in our bar it's a pretty long bar counter here 
but uh, we do not have something at the back. But all of our experiments happen within the bar counter because there's enough space here. So during at this point in time, for example, it's afternoon, the bar is too mm-hmm. shut. So we come in early. If there is a recipe that we need to check on or, or kind of mm-hmm. taste uh, the drink, we kind of do that as a team. You know, like me, a couple of other bartenders who, who work along with me. So we try to do all of those experiments at the bar itself and try and uh, taste it as much as possible and see if there is any improvisation that is yeah. required. Uh, so it's an ongoing mm-hmm. process, and I think the more we taste, the more we experiment, is uh, when we actually create more okay. recipes. The foundation for sure is to be able to uh, get the right know-how of the mixes that we're going to use, whether it's mm-hmm. alcoholic or whether it is yeah. non-alcoholic. And uh, along with the the right know-how of the of the mixes or or the mm-hmm. ingredients. It is also important to have the right imagination, yeah. right? right? Uh, we always need to feel the cocktail or feel the flavors mm-hmm. in our mind, and that comes through several That's years true. of practice. So the more we practice, we'll get okay. it right. So um, it's almost like cooking, as you said. So just because you know the base flavors of everything, totally. Totally. Uh, you know that this might work mm-hmm. with this combination, and that's how you create a new recipe. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this this is just a yeah. general question because I'm a complete layman. Um, is it just one spirit that you use in a cocktail, or do you have a mix of spirits? So that depends upon cocktail depends. to cocktail. Okay. Uh, it absolutely, you know, could be a mixture of spirits. You could also do a single spirit mm-hmm. cocktail. So it's not necessary that cocktails are supposed to have a lot right. of spirits. At the same time, it is also not necessary that cocktail is only supposed to have one spirit or two spirits. So there is no hard and fast okay. rule it depends on what he, what is it that you are trying to achieve mm-hmm. to the drink uh, and what do each component of the ingredient bring mm-hmm. into play so that's okay. important it is not about just putting something to make it look good or feel good or give value for money it is purely about uh, the right contribution of each ingredient that we put in there whether alcoholic or non alcoholic so they can be a, they could be a cocktail which is purely three ingredients and all three ingredients would be alcoholic mm-hmm. at the same time there could be a cocktail where it has five ingredients and only one is that oh. so uh, there is no hard and fast rule there there are no limitations okay. as far as how many types of types of spirits or alcohol could be present in mm-hmm. a cocktail i i just had this query because when i um, tried my first drink i was uh, i was warned that you should not mix uh-huh. your drinks and when well, cocktail completely goes against that mm-hmm. rule so hence i just wanted to confirm it's possible to mix two drinks. If you're, if you're an yes. amateur and if you're trying to make a cocktail mm-hmm. at home and you're doing it more as a hobby or just as just mm-hmm. for fun, then it is better to stick to one one spirit because at least you will have the right know-how of that particular right. spirit. So you make it simpler, mm-hmm. cocktail, right? But professionally, as you take it up as a career, as as you work as you know, if you're working as a professional bartender, that's where the idea of no single or no multiple spirits could come into play so it's not necessary that you need to just use one or 10 what is important is how well you know your spirits and how well you know what you're going to achieve by using either one or two spirits in the cocktail absolutely sir well thank you thank you for letting me know this <laughs> so uh, sir what do you do when someone new comes to cocktails and dreams and has absolutely no idea what to order like maybe me I'm I'm somebody who has absolutely no idea of what to order. How how would you deal with someone like that? This is very simple, you know. Uh, when when I opened my first bar in 2012 mm-hmm. in Gurgaon called Cocktails and Dreams Speak mm-hmm. Easy, uh, this was eight eight and a half years yes. ago. You know, cocktail wasn't big, as in cocktail people were drinking cocktails. Well, a lot of people were drinking cocktails like Long Island Iced Teas and Cappy Oscars and Mojitos, mm-hmm. but not many people were experimenting with finer spirits. And cocktails were still at its very nascent mm. stage uh, what i used to do is and i think that purely came to my experience uh, in the area of bartending also in the area of training because i've been involved with a lot of trainings in the past so i used to observe guests when they were looking at the menu and trying to see if you know there was something interesting that they could pick up from the cocktail mm-hmm. list i would gauge them from mm. a distance and i would approach them myself even before they completed they are they are registered on the on the menu i would just immediately go to them and say 
you look confused. Are you confused? Many, and a lot of them would actually say, <laughs> yes, I'm confused because I'm not so sure what yes. I want to drink. And I used to uh-huh. tell them, you tell me what you usually drink at home. What is your favorite spirit? What is it that you like in a cocktail? What is it that you expect? Mm-hmm. And let me customize the drink. Okay. So I may have picked up something from the menu, but I would customize the drink according to his or her liking, right? right? Uh, that was very important because it paved mm-hmm. the way for a good cocktail culture in my right. bar. And I think it also gave rise to the fact that every visitor who came to, the, uh, to my bar mm-hmm. at that time uh, was always looking forward to interacting with me or my bartenders mm-hmm. and uh, trying to experiment a cocktail. And that kind of prevailed throughout those years. And it still stands intact till date. You know, like even now when people come in, uh, people know that you know this is a cocktail bar and uh, the idea is to go have a, have a great drink there. So, you know, 90% of our sales is now based on cocktails. I think it is mm-hmm. important that we take the lead and uh, approach our customers and see if if we can help them try a cocktail. And if you if, if we do it with a lot of confidence, mm-hmm. and if you're very sure that what I'm going to make is something that would be liked by a mm-hmm. customer, I'm sure the present day customers would be more than happy to experience and experiment with new ideas, you know, and enjoy them. Okay. So, absolutely. Uh, 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 a must to for a bartender. Okay, for sure. so uh, you have to make sure that um, one is you converse with people, understand what kind of personality they have or what they're looking for and then create something that is completely offbeat but specific to them. And since since you provide, um, you know, customer service like that, people come and talk to you more, which is interesting. <laughs> so, sir, I have this question. People usually tend to talk a lot when they are spirited, you know, pun intended. So is there any conversation uh-huh. that you would like to share from any such interaction that has changed you or has helped the person in any way or was just funny in some way? I think uh, my, in my early years when I was still working in a hotel here mm-hmm. in Delhi and I used to work in the park of the Pool mm-hmm. Lounge and we used to have a few regulars and there were quite a few who actually used to have good conversations at the bar. So they were regulars in the bar, they were not there to kind of completely get sloshed. But they were there to just enjoy the drink, and uh, I got to yes. know them, and it did did have an, a strong impact on me uh, as a as a young mature bartender. Mm-hmm. I used to listen to a lot of the conversations, and most of them who came to the bar were you know in their in their uh, late thirties or early forties, and they were quite successful in their respective mm-hmm. fields. And I said, listen to the conversation, and I I remember this particular guest of mine, who was also a long staying guest in the hotel. And he he was somebody who was a great orator, you know. And I listened to him, and uh, there was something that he said many years ago, and I listened to him very carefully. And it kind of has shaped up my career to a large extent. I I always say that you know he's my godfather because not purely because he supports me uh, in any way, but purely through mm-hmm. his wisdom is where I kind of gained uh, and and could shape up my career. So he used to say that you know as a young yeah. man. The idea is to work hard between the age of 20 and 30. So when you're at the age of 20 and 30 is when you are probably at the peak of your of mm. your life in terms of performance. Right? And I look at sports people and I always see that most people do their or perform their best when they're at the age of 25. They're physically fit, they're mentally fit, they're very agile, you know, the body kind of works in, in synchronization with yes. the mind. Uh, and so he used to say, you know, between 20 and 30 is when you put in your best foot forward and give it your best shot to life, uh, you know, whether it is career or whether it is personal life. Between 30 and 40 is when there is growth. So if you made a strong foundation be- between the age of 20 and 30, uh, there will be good amount of growth between the age of 30 and 40. And then 40 onwards, it's, it's rock and roll. And that is exactly what I have kind of experienced in my life, you know. Uh, I think the first few years were absolutely uh, not just, I would not say it as a mm-hmm. struggle, but the first five years for me was pure devotion mm-hmm. to work. Uh, I really worked hard, you know, at an average, I, I was working about 12 to 14 hours mm-hmm. a day. I would never question my seniors in terms of what they asked me to do. I would just do whatever they asked me to do. But at the same time, I would keep my mind mm-hmm. open and uh, I would pick up as much as possible 
uh, through practice, through listening to the seniors, through reference studies, and all of that. And that kind of helps. So, you know, these were, these were good conversations that I had. And these are things that really help. But at the same time, uh, as a botanist, I also have had really silly and nonsense conversations. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> at, in the uh -huh. bar, you know, you have all kinds right. of conversations. Yes. Right? So, as you drink, the more you get spirited, <laughs> the conversations could lead to anything. And I think it is all about the characteristics of a person. Mm -hmm. There are some people who talk a lot of sense when they're two drinks down. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people who talk absolute nonsense when they're two drinks down. So it also depends upon the mindset yeah. and the person's mm -hmm. character. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. okay. That's quite interesting. And uh, well, I completely agree. This is uh, something my senior also told me that I have the time now. So I can uh, try new things and keep uh, working hard. And then, you know, find, basically find the foundation. And once I do, then I can keep on building on it. So uh, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm yeah. talking to you. I'm trying to understand different perspectives of people. And this is one lesson that I'm going to keep with me yeah. for sure. I will keep working hard. Mm -hmm. So, sir, um, yeah. uh, from what I understand about this craft is that it's not just, you know, mixing cocktails. It's not just uh, understanding a personality. It's not just talking to people. There are a lot of aspects that goes into bartending. So what do you think, according to you, are the roles yeah. and responsibilities that of a bartender? I think you need to be a more mature human being. You need to, apart from practice, apart from knowledge, apart from your daily work, you need to, you know, evolve mentally. That's very important. You've got to have the right mindset. That's why, rather than just bartending, I always refer to the fact that you should be very mindful of what you're doing. You should be aware. Right? You need to keep your, your mind very focused and also evolve it over a period of time. So you need to mature with that. You know, you cannot be somebody uh, who has great knowledge or works really, really well. Uh, so the reason why I say this is because as a bartender, you are not just fixing a drink. You're not just uh, creating mm -hmm. cocktails. You're also the heart or the nerve center of the bar. Right. You know, because it is you who can make a bar or break a mm -hmm. bar. Okay, so you know, at times you could be somebody who can strike a great conversation. Mm -hmm. You could just be at the bar and uh, through your energy, you could create a, an absolute positive vibe mm -hmm. for the bar. Right. You could also be a people's man. You could be so friendly with your customers that they love to come uh, have a drink and sit and chat with you. So, you know, you've got to be a combination of all of them. And I think the most important thing in that lot is to make sure that you have the right human mm -hmm. value. Okay, so, you know, you've got to have that energy in you, which is absolutely mm -hmm. positive. And it's very easy to say this, uh, but it is purely about practice. And these are things that have to be or needs to be proved practically. It cannot be just read. You will never ever know how to develop or gain human values through mm -hmm. reading books. I think it is purely through putting it very sincerely in your mind and practicing it every day. And keep that and make that as your, as your habit. And that becomes your character. Mm -hmm. And so these things are very, very important. Mm -hmm. Uh, apart from, of course, knowledge and creativity and, uh, you know, style and all of things, these things are equally important, but this is uh, as important as any other thing that you do behind mm -hmm. the bar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, like I said, it's it's a very interesting job mm -hmm. because there is no single definition of what requires to be a good yeah. bartender. I think uh, there is, the list is never trending. <laughs> but uh, whatever you said makes sense, you know, sir, because... Um, I, now, when you were describing a bartender that is ideal, I could visualize this. Like I could visualize it because when I have gone to a bar and I have seen somebody who has got that aura or the persona who knows how to mix drinks, talk, I would definitely want to go back there. I would definitely want to have a conversation, a mindful conversation. Uh, but as you said, if it is dull and you know it's just somebody coming and giving you drinks and you just drink and go, maybe it wouldn't be as impactful. Or um, maybe I wouldn't go back there. Yeah. So, yes, definitely there are a lot of things. And as you said, it is something that you do on the job and not uh, done by theory, just theory. So the thing is that you might not even, you know, the most, sorry, the most important thing is to yes. be able to win the trust of your patrons, right? Why would you go to a bar and uh, risk your money mm -hmm. on the skills of a bartender? 
I think only when you trust the bartender, you are very confident that this person can fix a great drink for me is when you would risk right. your money on your skill. Right? And that has to come through and through, through, you know, through your body language, through the way you convert, through the way you're fixing yeah. drinks, the way you're moving behind the bar. All of these things wow. become very, very important for that person who is a stranger yeah. to that bar to be able to trust you. The moment he starts to trust you is when you become a bit better bartender. And I always see this every time I meet bartenders, whether it's amateur or senior bartender, mm -hmm. I always say that it is not about the cocktail. The day, the day, the beer start, the beer start, start mm -hmm. to taste better in your bar, that is when I think you'll be able to crack it really well. So, you know, otherwise that guy can drink yeah. a beer even sitting yeah. in his luxurious drawing exactly. room, right? Why does he have to come to the bar? He needs to feel mm -hmm. that the beer tastes better in this particular bar of, of yours, right? Where he would then say, oh, let me, you know, he will not think of just the beer. He will think of the atmosphere. He will think of mm -hmm. the overall ambience, the energy. And that is very important. The same thing applies to cocktails. You know, I do not have to be a bartender who makes this, you know, amazing drinks. And there is no definition of how amazing mm -hmm. or how delightful the cocktail could be. Uh, there are millions of bartenders across the globe, and I'm sure yes. everybody makes fabulous drinks. But what scores it? Have you been able to, apart from just making the drink, have you been able to extend or lend that kind of an atmosphere or that kind of a vibe through your body language, mm -hmm. through your you know posture, through your facial expression, through your eye contact, through your art of conversation? If you've been able to do all of that, the cocktail that was probably striking uh, 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 you know, a positive rate of mm, 80% yes, would then be at 100%, right? Then the guy would say, <laughs> he would sip the drink and say, wow, this is this is an amazing cocktail because he's, he's put in an atmosphere That's where true. the cocktail has to taste good. Right? Mm. So these are very, very important aspects. Uh, what I understand from this is, sir, it's not just bartending. It's, it's there everywhere. What you said right now is relevant everywhere. Uh, it's very important yeah. to have that body language and yeah. the kind of persona that people are drawn into. And that is how you can sell a product or okay. whatever you're selling, whatever you, the service you're providing is only possible if you can build that trust, build that rapport, have that confidence that people can visually see. And that is when they will definitely mm -hmm. give you their money. Okay, And I know this is the product that I can invest in. And well, it's a learning experience for everybody. That is what I feel. Exactly. You know, we talk about extending an experience, mm -hmm. a good cocktail experience, mm -hmm. right? Or a good bar yes. experience. Uh, what does it mean? It actually means how can I lend happiness to the other right. guy on the other side, right? That is only possible if I'm happy myself. Yes. Right? It only comes to right practice. I cannot lend happiness by just smiling at him, even if I'm very happy from within myself. Right. Right? Uh, I don't really have to try to smile, you know, when I'm anyways happy, when I'm anyways feeling mm -hmm. positive. So that comes to the right practice. That's true. Agreed. Completely agreed, sir. <laughs> <laughs> sir, what do you enjoy the most about your work? Which part? Oh, the most that I enjoy about bartending is that I get to meet mm -hmm. people. I get to meet people from all walks of life. You know, uh, and that is what has been, uh, you know, keeping me and my professional life so happy. Mm -hmm. is Because I meet people from all walks of life. I meet people from... I would not say good or bad. I would say people who are yes. different in terms of the characters. I've met people who don't want to talk to you and I've met people who just want to, uh, you know, keep on talking mm -hmm. forever. You know, and I've also met people who, like I said earlier, who said a lot of nonsense. And I've also <laughs> met a lot of people who made tremendous amount of sense. Yes. So I think one of the big things or one of the takeaway, biggest takeaway mm -hmm. from me, from my profession is that I get to meet meet people mm -hmm. and that is why for me every day is a new day yes. you know although i might come to the same bar often mm -hmm. often but uh, i think it is all about meeting this whole bunch of new people and you do not know who's going to come to my bar today yes. right uh, <laughs> and i've had some great interactions with people from different walks of life successful businessmen uh, i've met people who are you know entrepreneurs mm -hmm. At the same time, I've also met a lot of uh, people with a broken heart and people who are completely sad on that particular day. And I've been able to be a part of their sorrows and like, lend my shoulder for them to cry. Mm -hmm. And we've ended up becoming great friends. Mm -hmm. right? So <laughs> it's a combination of it. And I think that, that keeps you going. That's true. That's true.
and that is what we have been missing in the past year right because of covid there's no interaction that's the annoying part <laughs> so i'm glad everything is almost resuming to normal there's still a long way to go but yes totally. that's that's one thing that people is going so uh, so from all these experiences you've spoken to a lot of people and you've worked for 25 years is there one thing that you know that has been with you like a talisman that you would like to tell the audience like, this is my learning this is something that has stayed with stayed with you for the past 25 years you know i have experienced failure a lot of mm-hmm. times so one of the things that i have learned is that it's good to fail okay. you know in life it is not always great to be successful i think it it's important to be able to understand and experience failure and uh, one of the biggest assets for me is that i have been able to experience failure okay. and that is what botany has taught me every time i make a drink it's not necessary that the drink will always bring in that wow mm-hmm. uh, effect coming from the from the audience there have been times where i say oh i i don't like this drink at all i hate mm-hmm. it uh, and there have been people who do not like uh, what i do behind mm-hmm. the bar so you know i have been able to experience failure there was a time when i was unemployed for almost almost 6 months okay let's go hotel and i tasted what unemployment mm-hmm. is you know i i i realized what uh, being jobless is all mm-hmm. about right uh, so i think failure is a very important to experience and what i have learned in the last 25 years i failed many mm-hmm. times and i think that failure has helped me evolve as a human being evolve as a professional mm-hmm. and that is the biggest lesson of my life in my 25 years of my career in botany and i know that i will still fail in the near future as well i will fail many times in the near future yeah. as well and every time i fail is when i want to enjoy success mm-hmm. right so because i've experienced failure when something good comes my way i i make the best out of it isn't as an i i make sure that i enjoy 100% out of that <laughs> success that comes my way so that is be the biggest lesson Oh this is interesting and actually um I feel so positive talking to you I actually feel that I'm having a drink with you and we're having this conversation <laughs> I this is this is an interesting conversation Thank you very much <laughs> So um so coming to the last question this is something that I ask on my podcast because uh, in India there's a concept called being settled where everyone around you or your relatives and uh, people who don't know you come and ask you beta when are you getting settled and i have realized that everybody has <laughs> uh, their own concept and that is how unsettling podcast started in the first place so bartending is something completely off the yeah. and still you have made your name in it so for you what does settled mean to you uh, is my question i think settled to me is uh, when i go home mm-hmm. at night and lay my head on the pillow if i can immediately doze off i think that is being oh settled. my god <laughs> you know uh, if If there isn't too many things going in right. my mind, but I end up being a tired, happy man. I can just lay my head on the pillow and I can just immediately doze off. That is pure soothing settlement for me. Wow! So that's okay. <laughs> that's my goal in life now. <laughs> If you have absolutely no thoughts going on in your head and you're happy, that means it's settled. Well, um, I'm going to take this home. I'm not. Yeah, no. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you so thank you so much these were all the questions that i had for you and uh, it has been an interesting conversation to know about okay. your journey and this craft and to understand that bartending goes beyond just making drinks but understanding and having a proper conversation and, you know mm-hmm. proper body language everything is necessary and i also know that you train um Yeah. people who are interested in becoming a bartender so is there any place where people can get in touch with you or a course online where you know, i can let people know so i run my own uh, bartending school as well here mm-hmm. in delhi so we 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 extend a 3 month and a 6 month right. course to people who are interested in the area of bartending so that's there and also along with it there are also a lot of these a 4 hour or a 3 hour workshop that i conduct for consumers mm-hmm. who are just interested in just learning about cocktails as a mm-hmm. hobby but yes uh, we run a proper bartending school here okay so it's in and we do import a certificate course in bartending it's in delhi so if only people in delhi can attend is that not possible yeah delhi and india uh, <laughs> <laughs> for now it's only around delhi okay okay done <laughs> so i will make sure that i find the links and add them in the description 
So thank you, sir. Thank you so much for taking time out of your life and doing this with me. I had an absolutely great time talking to you. Thanks a lot, Amrita. <laughs> Uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me as part of your podcast, and uh, you know, it, and thanks for considering the fact that a bartender could speak about his career. I'm sure it will go a long way in letting or help the cocktail culture grow in India. I hope so. So thank you very much. <laughs> It's been a wonderful conversation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Hi. If you can hear this, that means you have reached the end of the episode. So like. Share, subscribe, follow. Stay tuned to Unsettling. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can always reach out to me on my Instagram page, Amrita Sukumar underscore Unsettling, or send me an email on podcast dot unsettling dot as at gmail dot com. Hope to hear from you soon. Bye.